Hey, what's up YouTube and welcome to a quick video tutorial about how I did it. All right, in one of my previous vlogs, someone asked me if I could do a tutorial about my bullet trails in my game and I realized I could totally do it. So I decided to create this small scene. It will contains the bullet trail, but also the muzzle flash. So yeah, let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is to take a look at the player scene. It contains the end node, which will be responsible for the up and down movement, but it also contains the ray cast, which will be used to determine if we hit a wall or not. The last thing is the muzzle flash position. So this is basically where the bullet will come from. All right, so let's take a look now at the bullet trail. It has a mesh instance and that's it. I use the capsule mesh for that and I change the radius and also the height. The next thing is to rotate it sideways so it makes sense and also to move it so it starts at the beginning of a scene like that. That's cool. So the next thing I want to do is to add a material to the mesh and add a color. I also like to use emission so it glows with the multiplier. Don't forget that if you want it to glow you need to change your word environment and you need to enable the glow else well nothing will glow. All right well that's it for the bullet trail. Let's jump to the muzzle flash now. This one contains just a GPU particle 3D. That's enough to generate the flash. Let's Let's take a look at properties now. So the first thing I change is the amount of particle. Five is way enough. I've also changed the lifetime of each particles because I want the flash to be really quick on the screen. And the next thing is the one shot because we want each of these five particles to appear only once. All right, cool. So we create a process material and we reset the gravity so nothing moves. I have added an angle so each particle generate in a different rotation. Perfect. So the next thing is to add a drop pass and we're gonna use the quad mesh for this. This is what we're gonna put the image I change the size a little bit so it makes more sense. Now let's create the material for it. I just put an image that fits here. That's up to you. What also worked the best for me was the transparency to depth prepass and the blend mode to add. All right, and I also like to add emission because it glows. The last thing here is to change the billboard mode so it faces the player. That's it. It looks just like that. Coding time. All right, I usually go with C Sharp for my development, but I also did GDScript for this tutorial to reach more people. So just stick to the side you use. The first thing we want to do is to grab our node from our interface. So the add node array cast the muzzle flash marker, but also the packet scene for the bullet trail in the muzzle flash itself. So we can instantiate them later. The next part is pretty standard. It moves the camera and the player. This part is really there for the demo of the tutorial. So I don't want to go too much in detail details about this part. The next line though is when you click on the fire button, it goes to the on fire function where we instantiate our bullet trail and we create a look at point. This point is 100 meters away from the center of the camera and this is used for when the ray cast doesn't collide with anything. If it collides though, we calculate the maximum distance before we need to destroy the bullet trail. We also update the look at point to match the ray cast collision point to make sure the trail look at the right direction. All right, so the next point is to add the bullet trail to the muzzle flash and also to make it look at the point we created. Last but not least, we create a muzzle flash and we add it to the muzzle flash position and that's it. We are done with the player. Let's jump into the bullet trail now. So like we did with the player, we grab an instance of the mesh. We're also going to need the mesh 8. We're going to use this for the calculation later. And remember what we did on the player, we set the max distance for the bullet trail. Let's create a variable. The way it works is that in the ready function, we're going to check if we have a max distance. If we don't, it means that we are looking probably at the sky. So we're going to create a timer and we're going to destroy the bullet trail after the end of it. Pretty cool. So in the process function, we're going to move the mesh forwards. And this is also where we're going to check if the mesh has moved beyond the maximum distance that we set. Remember the variable we created earlier. This is where we use it. This is to prevent the bullet to go through the object. Hey, that's awesome. We are done with the bullet trail muzzle flash now. So we grab the particle node and we just emit it. This is because the particle is set as one shot. And the last thing is to destroy the flash at the end of the timer. That's it. We are done. We have a bullet trail with a muzzle flash. Keep in mind that this is not the only solution, but this is the way I did it in my game and I think it looks decent. Wait, you want more? Well, the project is on GitHub and the link is in the description. Have fun. All right, folks, I'm done. I would like to know if you enjoyed the pace of this tutorial and also the fact that I've included C-Sharp and GDScript. How was it? All right, we're gonna see each other on the next one.